Hello folks and thank you for joining me. This is Jen Espinosa Goswami over at Be Weightless. Don't forget to like my page if you haven't yet. Um, I wanted to hop on really quick because I'm going through some dietary changes in my life and I remember when um, I first started changing my diet when I was 100 pounds overweight and the particular challenges I had in trying new things. So I thought I would hop on and share a little bit about how to try new things like a boss. So don't forget to say hi if you're joining me live or are on the replay. I love to know who's joining me. So I'm gonna to try to pan to the food I'm trying today. See, uh, I'll tell you what it is a little bit later, but here's the interesting thing. I've never tried uh, this pasta. It's actually a lentil pasta. Hi, thanks for joining us. Um, I've never tried this sauce. I made a pesto out of arugula, lemon, garlic, salt, and pepper. And I think that's about it. So basically everything on this plate other than the chicken sausage that I threw in there, which I love, is brand new to me. And um, well, for, let me back off a little bit and tell you a little bit about why I decided to change my diet and uh, the implications it could have for me going forward and why it was so important. So yesterday I saw a naturopath, and um, naturopaths are people who believe in um, non-traditional alternative medicines that are, um, hi Lisa, thanks for joining, lentil pasta, yeah, <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about my experiences with that, but um, I saw a naturopath yesterday, and I went through what's called electroderm screening, and basically what they do is they, um, they touch different points on your hands and feet to determine whether you your body is in balance in certain organs and meridians within your body. And so there are different pulse points and energy points within your hands and feet that can identify underlying issues in the um, connected organs and tissues. Not necessarily the tissues, it's more on a cellular level. And I don't know everything there is to know about it. It was my first experience doing it, but it intrigued me and it was based on, um, you know, reading a particular machine that had all sorts of different processes involved with it. So I was like, okay, I'll try it. Um, the reason why I was trying this screening, electroderm screening, is because I've been struggling with a cough for five months now. And I had taken my version of antibiotics for pneumonia way back at the end of 2016. So I killed the infection, supposedly, and yet I'm still not improving health-wise. I'm still not able to exercise the way I'd like to be. It's, I still wasn't experiencing the quality of life I would like to. I had trouble breathing, um, somewhat asthma-like conditions. So I, I d decided to visit a naturopath for one option, and then I'm also gonna see an allergy slash asthma specialist tomorrow. So first of all, when you go to try new things, determine what measurements or authorities you want to see in terms of measuring where you are currently and what progress you'd like to see. But that's what led to me trying new things today. And um, lentil pasta with an arug uh, arugula pesto, and uh, chicken sausage. And unfortunately, it's not something that I really enjoy today. So I have a bunch of arugula in my fridge that I need to figure out what to do with. And I also have a bunch of lentil pasta that I need to figure out how to make it more appetizing for me. First of all, let me share with you that I am not a pasta eater. I, I could go literally months without eating pasta. It's just not something that I really enjoy. It's not something I eat a lot of. And not because it has gluten. I could care less about gluten. It's more because pasta has never been a thing for me. But when I saw that there was lentil pasta, I love lentils. And I love um, lentils. <laughs> That's Betsy. I love lentils reimagined. And lentil pasta to me sounded the best of both worlds. Now, one of the things my naturopath recommended to me and the new dietary focus that I'll be using going forward, at least for the next 40 days, if not longer, is to decrease the amount of acid in my body. And I'm not gonna go into the whole acid versus alkaline thing, but in a nutshell, the more acid you have in your body, the more likely your body is susceptible to infections. So I do have an infection of some sort in my body that I'm trying to clear away. And being the health coach that I am that does not believe in products and that sort of thing, I want to do it in the natural route. So there are different food recommendations I can use to heal myself from the inside out. And one of those says that um, I need to avoid high acidic foods. Now, this is new to me because I have not ever done acidic versus alkaline types of food com 
combos or things like that. I focus mostly on macros. So for me, you know, the, the things I've become accustomed to, like protein, fat, and carbs, that was easy, right? But that was not helping me fight this infection that I'm dealing with. So that was my reason why I'm approaching some different dietary changes. Now I'd like to invite you, those who are watching or those who are watching the replay, what impetus do you have or what motivation do you have for changing your diet? Is it a lack of energy? Is it um, that you just want to release some weight that you've been holding on to? Is it that you feel sick to your stomach? Is it that you have a lingering infection? There are lots of reasons why we would embrace different dietary changes. Is it because someone in your family it has intolerances and allergies that you want to respect and you want to follow their lead so they're not forced to watch you eat foods that they can't eat? I would really like to know, those of you who are watching, what uh, is your motivation for changing your diet, no matter what that diet tends to be today? Now, I did share that I would talk about specific tips you can use to um, try new things like a box. Um, so first of all, what I would say, as I'm going through this, this challenge myself, and as I was looking back on what I did when I lost 100 pounds, um, at that time, I was in a totally different place than I was. That was almost 20 years ago now. But at that time, I was eating a lot of processed and boxed foods and canned foods. That was all I knew. That was, uh, you know, the, the only things that you can get coupons for. We were on a budget. So those are the kinds of foods I was familiar with. Frozen, canned, uh, boxed, all that sort of thing. Easy, convenient, processed, crap, basically. So when I was trying to embrace new changes to my diet to make it healthier, I realized, first of all, that trying to eat a bunch of leaves was not going to do it for me. Uh, yes, I know you need to eat more fruits and vegetables. I know everyone knows that. It's not a matter of knowledge. It's a matter of how do you implement that knowledge. And at the time and the place I was then, a mere few years after saying I would never eat anything green, I knew that I had to start with what my strengths were. And at that time, my strengths were... I liked beans and lentils. And there's lots of fiber in beans and lentils and they make you feel full and um, they go a long way for a small serving. So that was my strategy for when I was trying new things back then. Now today my strategy is a little bit different because I already like healthier foods. However, I do need to incorporate more foods that are alkaline. And um, I do have a list that I'm working off of, so I'm still trying to figure this out. But things that are uh, high acid are breads and starches and potatoes and corn and carrots a little bit. So things that are high starch are things that are high acid. So I need to avoid those things. And full disclosure, I've been eating a lot of starches. I've been eating a lot of acidic foods. Um, and acid doesn't necessarily mean it tastes acidic to you because um, the interesting thing is that lemons and limes are alkaline producing foods. So I've been putting you know, lemon and lime in my water, which that is an easy change for me. I love the refreshing taste of lemon and lime, lime especially, in my water. So that was an easy thing for me. So start with your strengths. My strength today for my plate that I've been representing is lentils. I love lentils. And um, pasta doesn't matter so much to me, but I couldn't figure out how to use the small red lentils in a stir fry to incorporate some greens and to incorporate some protein. So I was like, okay, I'll just lentil pasta. That sounds good to me. And uh, it's red lentils, which is something I really enjoy eating. And I'm trying to avoid rice. It's hard for me not to throw rice and potatoes in a lot of things because that's kind of my staple. Those are my staple things that I always have in my kitchen and I always love and I usually default to when I need to cook up something really quick. So I'm like, okay, no rice. Um, I do like lentils and I need to incorporate some greens. Now when it comes to greens, I'm not one of those people who's going to be like getting a bag of spinach at the grocery store and saying, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm going to eat this raw spinach and yum. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, I'm not a person who loves eating leaves. I'm not a rabbit food kind of person. So I've had to really reimagine how I enjoy my green veggies. And arugula, actually, is one of those green veggies that I'm okay with. But again, I don't want it as a base for a salad. I want it reimagined. So start with what you like. That's lesson number one. I like lentils. I like arugula. I started with ingredients that I know that I like. And then, because I don't eat arugula, you know, as a bed of lettuce for other things, I was like, I need to reimagine it. So step two is to reimagine things that you like 
or maybe thought you didn't like, but there's another way you can enjoy it and reimagine it in such a way that it's suddenly tasty or appetizing or interesting to you. Oh, thanks, Lisa. Yeah, the reason the lentil pasta was a bust was because it's very dry and um, it almost has that feeling of it's like soaking up the moisture in your mouth when you're eating it. Whatever, I'm sure I'll find another way to make it appetizing because I certainly have a bag left and I got to figure that out. So creativity is part of the process, right, Lisa? <laughs> Thanks for chiming in. Um, so reimagine things that you like or reimagine things that you think you don't like, but you could if you reimagined it. For example, I'm not a raw veggie person. I'm sure we've established that by now. However, I do love fritters made of vegetables. Some of my favorite fritters are, I have a carrot cauliflower one that I make. And when I say fritter, I don't mean deep fry. I mean, you, you kind of boil the vegetables together, you mash them together with some egg, and then you cook them in a, in a saute pan. So uh, not as greasy as it could be if it was a deep fried fritter. It's more of a saute preparation. I actually like veggies with a little bit of crunch, but crunch from um, fat, like butter or oil, and not crunch from being raw and I gotta work out. No. Sorry, that's Betsy. So I reimagine most of my vegetables as cooked veggies. Whether that's mashed or riced, you might have heard of broccoli rice or cauliflower rice. That's a reimagined version of cauliflower in broccoli. Um, so I like to reimagine my veggies, uh, usually in fritters, um, in pesto with this arugula. So you can make pesto out of anything. And since this is a green that I like, I like the sharp taste of arugula. I'm like, let me make it into a pesto. The pesto is okay. I just got to figure out what to put it on that makes it really awesome for me. But the lemon is amazing. I love lemon. So, you know, again, start with the things you like and then find ways to reimagine them. <clears throat> now, here's where the really challenging part comes in. There will be a number of foods that are recommended to you, regardless of what dietary changes you're trying to make in your life. And you're like, oh, I hate that food. I get you. I'm there with you. I'm trying to figure out how to make certain things that I previously hated appetizing. And here's what I have to say to that. You know how when you offer like 15 uh, different veggie options to your let's say preschooler or your school age kid and they toss it aside without even trying it because they're like, ah, you gave that to me last week and I hated it. Well, they say that you have to expose your kids to the same food 15 to 20 times before they might actually eat it for one and before they might actually enjoy it for another. Now, I've done some research um, when writing a blog article that adults, their taste buds tend to change as they get older. So things that were nightmarish for you as a kid can now suddenly become appetizing to you. Um, your tongue is different. Your taste buds are different. If you were someone who was very... Um, taste sensitive, those um, receptors can actually uh, decrease in their sensitivity as you get older. So that's why uh, apply the same principles to yourself that you would to your kid and just keep trying, right? Whether it's the same preparation, different preparations, what have you. And yes, I fully acknowledge there will be times when you will end up throwing your new food in the trash because it's not appetizing for you. I'm not going to throw this food in the trash. I'm going to see if I can still figure out what to do with it. I had enough of it where my tummy's full, so I'm okay. But um, I definitely have to figure out how to reimagine it. Um, my mother-in-law is actually very good at reimagining things, and uh, she actually calls it repurposing. My mother-in-law in India, she repurposes food. So um, she's very, very intentional about what she eats, and she feeds a big household of people. She doesn't do the cooking, but she does make sure that there's no food waste in her house, because waste is very... Um, painful for her. So what she does is she'll take, maybe she made a, maybe they had curry or maybe they had dal or something like that. So she will take that curry or dal and turn it into something either drier, wetter, soupier, what have you. She will repurpose it into a different version of a similar food. And that's certainly something you can do today. So if you have those, you know, veggies that are like falling apart at the bottom of your drawer, toss them in a soup, puree them, put them in some muffins or breads, you can repurpose just about anything. Um, but those are my top tips today. If anyone, uh, Lisa, if you have any questions or you have some tips that you'd like to share, I'd love to hear from you. Um, 
whenever you're trying dietary changes, it's difficult, but if you approach it with the right mindset and with these particular strategies I've talked about today, then you can approach your dietary changes with grace and with even a little bit of pleasure and certainly a lot of creativity. Now coming up next month, I will be holding a workshop at my house and I'd love to invite you to join me. Um, it's going to be called something along the lines of scrumptious salads you can actually enjoy. And this workshop is designed for folks who hate salad. So like me, the non-bunny food, non-leaf eater kinds of folks who want to eat healthier, um, maybe want to give salads another try and are willing to give uh, new foods a try, come join me for my workshop at my house. Comment on this video below if you're interested in joining me. I will send you a private invitation because I'm not just going to display my address all over the place. So let me know if that's something that interests you. It's going to be next month during the daytime. I have not secured a date yet and it's limited to only five people because my house is not terribly large. Uh, there will be a cost associated with this workshop um, just for me to cover the cost of the food and and the containers so you can take your scrumptious salads home with you along with the recipes. So comment below if you're interested in joining me for scrumptious salads you can actually eat and enjoy. Uh, that will be coming up next month. Otherwise, I'd love to hear from you. What are your top tips when it comes to trying new foods and what has really worked for you in the past? This is Jenna Spinoza Goswami over at Be Weightless. Thank you for joining me and we'll talk to you soon. Try something new. All right, bye-bye.